coming up. After joining the Second World War in December of 1941, it was often difficult for American aces to compete with the scores of German, Japanese, or even British pilots who had been fighting since 1939. However, there were a select few Yankees who would jump into combat and immediately show that they could compete with the best. In this video, we will take a look at George Preddy Jr., who would take down more than 25 enemy aircraft, making him one of the highest scoring American aces of all time, before his career as a fighter pilot would come to an end in one of the most tragic incidents in all of World War II. Hey guys, TJ here, and before I tell you about this story of one of America's greatest fighter aces, as you guys have seen in my historic videos before, the Japanese culture and military during this time settled for nothing less than perfection and flawless execution in all they did. And that is still the case in Japanese culture today. If you don't believe me, just ask Kamikoto, the sponsor of this video. In case you don't know, Kamikoto makes incredible kitchen knives made from Japanese steel and traditional techniques from Japan dating back over 800 years. Each blade actually takes years to complete before undergoing an individual inspection to ensure the highest quality. And that's probably why they are used at tons of Michelin star restaurants and all have a lifetime guarantee. They also come to you in a beautiful heavy-duty ash wood case for safe storage and it also makes a great gift box. They have plenty of different knives to choose from to suit your needs and you can also add a knife block or a whetstone for sharpening as well. They also sent me the three-piece Kanpeki knife set which I'm really enjoying and as soon as I started using them I could tell they were much better than the old ones I had. I highly recommend them for anyone who enjoys cooking or a great gift for any occasion. And best of all, Kamikoto is offering a great holiday sale right now. Just use code TJ3HISTORY and get $50 off any purchase. So to check out these great knives today, use the link in the description below. And thanks again to Kamikoto for sponsoring this video. Without further ado, enjoy. George Earl Preddy Jr., nicknamed Ratsy, was born in Greensboro, North Carolina on February 5th of 1919. In the years before World War II, Preddy worked as a barnstormer pilot, performing daring aerobatic stunts and tricks for crowds. When 1940 rolled around, Preddy tried to apply to join the U.S. Navy, but was rejected three times due to physical issues. While disappointed, Preddy returned to barnstorming and tried to regroup as he thought of other options. He eventually decided to apply to the U.S. Army Air Force several months later in the summertime. Preddy then successfully passed all of their qualifying exams and was cleared to join their ranks, but was informed that he'd have to wait until there was an open position available for him. To keep himself preoccupied, he opted to join the Army National Guard to gain experience while he waited for a position to open. A little under a year later, in April of 1941, Preddy finally received orders to report to flight training, for which he immediately reported for duty. On December 12th of 1941, just five days after Pearl Harbor, he graduated from the flight training program and was deployed to Australia with the 49th Pursuit Group to provide defense against Japan's aircraft attacks. For the next six months, Preddy would fly combat and training missions around the clock in the P-40. The P-40 during this time was a solid fighter, but also came up short in some aspects. It was able to fight in the South Pacific with a good amount of success due to the constant amount of low-level patrol and ground attack sorties. These are the missions that Preddy took part in while stationed here. Throughout these missions, he was able to damage two enemy aircraft, but was not able to claim his first kill. Unfortunately, however, Preddy's streak of fortune would come to a halt when he was involved in a severe collision in midair. On July 12th of 1942, he was flying a practice exercise when another P-40 would strike his plane. The pilot, one of Preddy's squad mates, came up behind him and was approaching him, but was then blinded by the sun. He then struck the tail of Preddy's aircraft and both pilots spun into an uncontrollable death spiral. The other pilots of their group watched in horror as they could do nothing, just hoping to see chutes open after the disaster that unfolded before them. Then, to their great relief, a white circle appeared as one of the pilots had successfully made it out of his plane. 
but then to their dismay, the second of the P-40s continued to hurtle downward, exploding in a ball of fire as no parachute would ever appear. The pilot killed in the crash would be Lieutenant John Saber, while the surviving parachute was Lieutenant George Preddy. Upon landing, rescue crews would find Preddy with a broken leg and extensive injuries from a rough landing with the accident. After a long and grueling recovery, Preddy was sent back to the front, but this time in the European theater with the 352nd Fighter Group flying the P-47. After his first combat mission here in September of 1943, Preddy experienced a great deal of success. His first victory would come in the P-47 on December 1st against German BF-109. This kill would likely come to a great relief to the young Preddy as validation for his efforts after such a long road to make it to this point. Three weeks later, he scored his second victory despite slim odds and a superior opponent, something that he made a habit of throughout his career as a fighter pilot. Here, Preddy led three friendly fighters in a dogfight against six German twin-engine fighters. He was able to down one and scatter the others. This earned Preddy the Silver Star Award. Shortly after, his unit converted to the new P-51 Mustang, which really allowed Preddy to hit his full stride. Preddy's aircraft can be seen here and was famously named Kripsamite. Upon changing to this fighter, he took down German fighters one after another. Over the next seven months, Preddy was credited with destroying more than 20 German aircraft, including six on a single day of combat on August 6th of 1944. He would take down all six in just a span of a few minutes on a single mission. This particular engagement would make Preddy one of the very few American pilots who accomplished the ace in a day feat by taking down five or more aircraft in a single day's combat. After this, his total victory count for the war would be all the way up to 24 and a half, making him one of the leaders for the U.S. Army Air Force. In December of that year, the Battle of the Bulge called for Preddy's group to move to a smaller airfield in Belgium. The 9th Air Force was under heavy demand for months, and as a result, the group was overworked and exhausted. The field that Preddy was moved to was so close to German lines that when their aircraft would land, they would experience fire from German anti-aircraft units on approach. On Christmas Day of 1944, Preddy led his unit in a support mission over Germany with bombers from the 8th Air Force. Lieutenant Gordon Carty was his wingman for this mission. After waiting around for a bit with no action, they were sent to monitor an area near Koblenz, Germany, where an enemy aircraft had been discovered. When the unit received a call for help, a grin spread across Preddy's face. They've started without us, let's join them, he said over the radio as they turned their planes in the direction of the fight. As they arrived, the pair would tangle with two 109s. Preddy took down both of them. A moment later, Preddy and Carty were called to an area southwest of Liege where enemy aircraft were attacking Allied ground troops. They headed that way and prepared to intercept. As they flew towards Liege, at a low level, Preddy noticed the long nose of the Focke-Wulf 190 emerging from the treetops in the distance. The American planes pushed forward, aiming to use a slight height advantage to gain speed and have the upper hand against the German aircraft. They leveled off at about 500 feet and began to close in on the Focke-Wulf quickly, about 15 miles inside of Germany's border. The focke 190, in an attempt to escape the Mustangs, took the pair of American fighters directly over an American airbase. As the Mustangs came out of a wooded area, they were pummeled with heavy ground fire from American anti-aircraft positions at the airfield that were firing at the focke 190 in front of them. The firing was constant and relentless, and both Preddy and his wingman took hits. Preddy, sensing that the gunfire was growing heavier, tried to escape by making a turn to the left. His wingman Carty watched from nearby and saw that halfway through the maneuver, about 700 feet in the air, Preddy's canopy released, but he did not emerge. It was at this time that Preddy took a direct hit to the chest from one of the Browning machine gun rounds attempting to shoot at the focke -Wolf. After being hit at such a low altitude, he was effectively trapped and could not bail out in time 
due to the plane's shallow angle and high speed. The Mustang careened into the ground and the metal crumpled as it flipped over while Preddy's fellow pilots could only watch helplessly. The other Mustangs in the pursuit also took hits from the American anti-aircraft, but they were able to survive the ordeal. At the base, Preddy's crew chief, Art Snyder, anxiously waited for Preddy's plane to return. As he watched aircraft after aircraft land, Snyder's eyes met another pilot that returned from the mission, and his stomach sank as his fears were confirmed when he saw the look in the pilot's eyes. He would soon learn that Preddy had been killed in a brutal plane crash caused by friendly fire. Major Preddy's death was mourned by his entire unit, who paid him tribute all throughout the night of Christmas and until the next day. Major George Earl Preddy received great acclaim as an officer and American fighter ace. At the time of his death, he was credited with 26.83 enemy aerial kills, and his accomplishments rank him as one of the top P-51 Mustang aces of World War II, and eighth on the list of all-time scorers for the United States. In his own words, Preddy was sure as hell not a killer, but treated combat flying as a game, and he was a guy that liked to come out on top. A number of awards and medals were credited to Preddy, including the Distinguished Service Cross, the Distinguished Flying Cross, and several Air Medals. To this day, Preddy is fondly remembered as one of the greatest pilots from the United States and the Fighter Pilots Pilot. I hope you enjoyed this historical recreation. Please make sure to click subscribe and comment if you have any ideas for future videos. If you want to support my content, please check out the Patreon link or my fan stores in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.